smoking TV show, South African edition. You are an excellent editor. I'm sure that you will be able to I'll edit, edit that out. Yes. Funky Dory. <laughs> uh, me and trying to find which page is next. Four. No, four comes after two. Looking without looking. Cape Town Society for the Blind Edition. There we go. You want to start from the very beginning? No, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry, Alan. And I'm straight from Cape Town Society for the Blind. Today, I'll be introducing a meal that my team, Cooking Without Looking, has put together for you guys to enjoy. The meal is Ichakalaka, Omfino, and Oma on the products. The reason why we show this meal is because it shows how versatile or how different our traditions and cultures are. But at the same time, how can we match them together? Um, Main meal, Omar and Ardik warm bears. In English, it translates to granny under the blanket. I'm a um, braille and three pain facilitator. I'm also partially sighted. Yeah, so um, what I will be cooking today is um, called Oma and bears. Those people who don't understand Afrikaans, what, it, what, the dish, what the dish is all about is a, a meal ball which is covered in cabbage. The cabbage is covering the meal ball. Why they call it Oma? Oma is a granny. So, you know, grannies are always cold and they need to be tucked away. So, we tuck the meat ball around the cabbage, so we cover them with the blanket. So that is a dish which I will be making today. So the ingredients which you will be needing is our onions, your spices, fish oil, um, lamb pieces, just for the flavor. It's just for the flavor. You can also replace it. You have options. You can replace it either with um, soup bones, you can use about two or three soup bones, and that, that, I mean, I also, I would prefer actually soup bones, but it cooks actually longer, so that's why I didn't want to use it, but soup bones is very nice for this, for this dish. And then we also have eggs, which we can use for the meatballs, the spices are there, here are your mints, it's just a half a kilo mince, and then cabbage. And then also the green pepper, and you also need um, garlic. I've already prepared some of my ingredients. This are the cabbage. This is the cabbage, which I just um, leave. It's all leaves. I didn't cut it up because this is where the um, meatball will be wrapped in. So you only cook it halfway through, so that. It can be flexible, so when you do wrap it around the meatball, it won't break. I've already chopped majority of my onions, so now I just need to chop another half, and then I will be adding it to the pot. And as I'm chopping, I just move my fingers backwards. And I let the side of the knife feel against my fingers, then I know how far I need to go. So then I just feel if everything has been chopped, and I know I can add it to my pot. What I do, I just go along the side of the stove, feel where my pot is with with my knife and put my board onto the pot, feeling it's inside the pot. Now I know I won't be missing. I just spread it evenly in the pot. Now you just, you have to braise it until it's nice and brown. Then you move on to 
actually your green paper. You slice your green paper and then afterwards you chop it evenly. Add this with your onions. So you are done. Start cleaning your garlic about three nice big cloves. I'll wash it off. Just rinse it a bit. This you can either grate or you can chop it, which I prefer doing to, to chop. Chop it nice and fine. I'll just gather it together and then I will also add this to my onions and green pepper. Onions was nice and brown. And then I added my meat and I added some water so that the meat can simmer through and become tender. Once your meat is nice and tender, halfway tender, you can then you add your, your, your chopped cabbage and your potatoes to the pot. And once that is nice and halfway through, then you can add your Roma owner I mean the meatballs and the cabbage, which will which I am busy preparing now. I'll be grating one onion and one when this onion is done, I'll be grating also the green pepper and garlic. But the garlic I will be grating on the finer side of the grater because it has to be more fine. I want to taste chunks of garlic in your meatballs. Once you've completed grating your onions, green pepper, and garlic, you can add your statements to it. Now we're adding breadcrumbs, which is a cup of breadcrumbs. And then you also add two eggs just to bind it together. We have our jars here with all our spices in, and we have um, labeled them in large print, and it's also labeled in braille. So the braille is written here on top, which is easier for us to identify. And now we're adding some salt. Just make sure it is salt. Yes, it is. I'll be adding a teaspoon of salt, pepper. You can either use black, but you have the option black pepper or white pepper. But I'll be using white pepper. I don't know how strong your pepper is. I don't know, you just make sure that you don't put too much in. You can add either a half a spoon, teaspoon, or three quarter or a spoon. It all depends on how strong you like your meatballs. I've got my um, dry parsley. I'll be adding two teaspoons. And then you can you have an option to add any other ingredients which you do want to. Um, I'll be eat, 
I'll be adding just a bit of meat masala, just for the taste.
I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I can't really hear the video. So maybe if it's not working because of signal, maybe you could um, just maybe dictate what's happening on the video or, or just give us a description of what she's doing at the moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, she's she's cutting. Okay, it's working now. I think because you were you were on mute, so the whole video was on mute. Oh, but we can hear the video. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah. Okay, I've done my chopping. I've done my chopping, so now I'm gonna it together in one one pot. I'm using a, a, a large pot, okay, like a space for my cook. I like a space more, especially when I have something to do with maize now. So I don't have to cook my meal in a tight pot. Uh, the butternuts, the first one, well, it must be mashed. Second one that I should put is a little bit of maize rice. So it's in in my cupboard this side in the servants or my bed sheet. So how do I know where to get my rice? I know this side is to throw. It's something like rice, mainly you know, cooking oils. I know this is where I get stuff like this. So I'll just put a cup of rice. I don't know why they cook the rice first, but I grew up when they cook spinach, I mean, they cook, um, you know, they cook it, they cook, they cook it like this. So I'm following the ingredients. But I think if you don't have the rice, it's so cold. But I'm following the ingredients that the adults they do from the Eastern Cape where I come from. We do like this. So this is. This is how I plan for my grandmoms. Due to insufficient time, I can just add cabbage now as well. I can just add cabbage now as well. So I have um, warm water. I'll put a lot of water so that my veg can just boil. boil. My veg is boil. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm coming to the still. Well, now I'm up. I'm checking on my part. I think it's just 15 minutes now. 
Let's go now checking my port. How is it going? So in order for me to know, are you going to So I'm meshing there, but not so I can see now. It's soft, it's getting meshed. So that means it's soft, so it's made, it's made cool because it's a little bit um meshy. So yeah, then it's soft. And now I know I can add my cabbage. I'm adding add my spinach, there's already yeah. There's a cabbage, butternut, and the rice. So now I can add my spinach and the, and the onion and my spices and my cooking oil so that it can just boil all together. Then finally, I can add my maize milk. But when you put on the the spinach must be richer than all the cabbage. Must be green. So uh, the so the the aromat. Must be suitable. I don't know how to say it, but what must be it while you're eating? So uh, for the two full teaspoons. Now and um, Rama. So is, uh, oh my god, I've left my big design camera, so I won't be able to see this Rama screen. But then, everyone, my partner, she can help me to read. Um, everyone, yes, oh, just here, yeah. okay, can you please help me to read this Rama screen? Because I know you need to read the five, please. Okay, Yes, yes, I'm the oh, wow. It's a 250 grams. <laughs> yes. oh, now I know oh. it's 250 grams at this game. I'm just going to take it off. So now I can fill that my 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 my, my vegetables, my pot on point, everything is right. Even when I'm stirring it, I can feel my wooden spoon is moving nice and smooth. So now I can add my maize milk. Let's go get my maize milk. They, um, when one can eat the maize milk straight to the pot, but throw the clumps. Throw the clumps if it didn't stay nice and well. So it depends on how one can stay nice and well. But for me, I don't want to take any risk to save my people. I, 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 um, I don't feel all the clumps. So I have a boil with cold water. Then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add um. I'm going to add my meal here in this cold water. Not too much, not too much of meal meal. Just to pick it up. The meal is just to pick it up the vegetables, you know. That's why I'm going to go like a steak. It's just to pick it up the vegetables. So now I'm, um, I'm mixing my, well, my cold water with my maize meal so that I can just dip straight to my vegetable and then I can just stay it all together and then my fino is ready my bowl is too small then it's not really all right but I'll just add water it's okay so watch me as I'm stirring it so that it doesn't get lumps Very strong. As I've just added um, maize milk in my in my vegetables, then that maize milk, the stove is high, so the maize milk is gonna burn. It's gonna burn. Then I must lower my stove. So the stove was at six. Now I'm gonna lower it to three. Spicy chakalaka. 
as I'm cooking on fennel, in my meal, I'm going to also add chakalaka, as it is part of the traditional meal. Chakalaka is mostly loved. It's mostly loved. You can go to colored areas, they love chakalaka. You can go to African areas, they love chakalaka. Most Africans, when they do dry, they would um, go for chakalaka, steak pop, and dry meat. So they love it like that. So it's African style. It's Cape Town style. People, they love it. So now, as it is nice, colorful, how am I, how, how I going to do it? You can do it in, in different ways, but this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a mix of peppers, red, to which I've chopped here. Uh, I have red, yellow, and I'm going to chop my green one. So I have three colors. So I'm going to do the mixture of three colors. And then I'm going to have my carrot, which is orange. So you see now I'm having the fourth color. And then obviously I'm going to have my onion for that nice flavor. And then I'm going to add beans and chutney sauce and some spices, pretty spice for the nice flavor. And obviously it's chocolate, it must be hot. So I will add my carrot carrots, my hot stuff. So I will add it on my chocolate. So I want all my chili, all my chili spices. So I'm trying to read out here which are the chilies and then I'm just gonna put it up front so that I can set them nicely, the one I want to use. Okay, I've already put on my stuff. So first put my cooking oil. My cooking oil. A little bit. I can try to come closer to to see how I put it because honestly I can't tell the measurement. So I can just come closer to see how I put it. My onion. It's, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a half an onion because I've chopped two onions and I put in wine bowl. Then I take off to the um, to the ufina and I take up to here. Here for This chili or pepper, this chili powder, and this chili flakes and barbecue. So I'm gonna take one tablespoon on each one. On each one, okay, not one, this not one, this one, you know, it must be half. It's good. too much pot in it. Must be half. Yeah. Aren't made so this is chili flakes. Lucky enough with chili flakes, even if you are totally blind, you can feel it, it's a rough. So yeah, with here, I'm gonna put the full spoon. Now it's not the cheese fries. Also I'm gonna put two. not too full, yeah. So all my spices I gave in. So now I put my onion, my spices. Now I put my peppers, my mixed peppers. Yeah, I like my peppers to be like to be well cooked. Just want them to be a little bit fried, well cooked. Because I want them only like I like them to be like crunchy. So I'm putting my carrot in my pot. I want to stir it. So I have my green, my yellow, my red, my orange. All my nice colors are here. To add more flavor, I'm going to put on chutney and then I'm going to put. I like to put my chicken before I put on beans so that, oh, not too much. Right. Since I still have a bit of vision, I don't measure it, so just fish it, but maybe. I can't really tell, I don't want to lie, I can't tell the measurement, but you just, you just pour it and then you can just feel it, you can just taste it and then you know whether you should add more or what. Now I'm going to add the baked bean in my pot. All my vegetables, all my taste is already on point, everything is good, so just to add the baked bean, a little more sauce, so there's nothing here. And then the chocolate is 
for the smell. Oh, people can just tell if they can just shout out loud. It smells so nice, so delicious. And then I'm just gonna leave it made for minutes just to just for the big things to absorb together with my vegetable so that the flavor can all together in one, can all be together in one. While getting ready to serve the meal to students. The reason why we have a black tablecloth and white plates so that the contrast can be nice and clear proportions like the people. Students entering the kitchen to enjoy the meal. in there. Thank you guys so much. Yes, thank you so much for sure. And you know, because of the time difference, it's pretty late there in Cape Town right now, but here we're getting ready for dinner. And boy, I don't know about you, Alan, but I am hungry after watching that. <laughs> Me too, Annette. That sounds, some of that stuff sounds really good. Now we would like to introduce you to the people who made this possible. Uh, Chief Executive Officer Lizelle DeWitt and Judith Coitzi, I hope I pronounced that right, and Sandra Dreyer and Golden Despazi and Shakira Karjiker. Um, uh, who would like to comment first? Yeah, we'd like those out in the virtual audience to comment as well as we're going to open it up to any questions you might have for our chefs of Kona and Avril today because they did such a fine job. They're great teachers. So bring on the questions and comments. They would love to hear. You know, I was seeing some great tips on, on handling oh, the kitchen, yes, about putting stuff into pots and getting it centered. But I was most impressed with Avril and her knife handling skills. Yes. For she sure. has it right on with the way you feel the back of the knife. The only thing I'd like to say to our audience is you might not want to start out trying it quite that fast. She was good. Yes, yeah, she was very confident with the knife. And I'm sure she learned that all at the Society for the Blind in Cape Town. I'd like to, if she can answer um, where she learned her wonderful knife skills, that would be awesome. Are you there, Avril? I don't know if she's there or not. She's on. She's on mute. Oh, oh, you're muted. You're you. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> we want to know, Avril. We would like to say to you first of all, you're an excellent teacher, amazing teacher, very relaxed, very 
precise. We want to know about your confidence and your knifing skills, where you learn them, and, and how do you relay that to the students so that they can gain some confidence? Well, um, firstly, when I, dis when I discovered that um, I needed some, some assistance with um, just discovering that I do uh, have an eyesight uh, problem, I went to um, Cape Town Society of the Blind and there they taught me some um, safety precautions in the kitchen. So it's more about life skills. And um, so when I became a facilitator, that's where I related to the um, students. And I'm now experienced in it. So that's why I had to also um, just bring out all the uh, safety, safety precautions to um, your, while I was cooking so that people who, who watches it, they can also use it in the kitchen, use it in the kitchen. So yeah. Yes. Okay. So you did it from trial and error and experience. Excuse me? You did it through trial and error. I'm sure you had some missteps. <laughs> and through experience, you got better and better. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Alan, do you have a question, honey? Well, I didn't really have a question other than just to compliment Avril on her wonderful life handling skills and some of the great tips that she gave our audience about how to center cutting boards over the pot so you don't spill stuff. And I can't even remember all of the great things, but uh, yeah, I was very impressed. You guys did very well. I had a Thank couple you, questions, Evan. if you don't mind. I, I always I have mind. questions. If you don't mind, I have a couple questions to Avril and Akona. We'll go back and forth. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you loud okay. and clear. Okay, thank you. All right. The question I had was, first of all, with the steamed, I was a little confused about the potatoes, and I wanted to know about the cabbage. Was it steamed before you wrapped the granny in the blanket? And why did yes. you use potatoes? I don't, I don't think I heard why you used the potatoes. Um, well, f firstly, the um, cabbage, I steamed the cabbage beforehand. I steamed it um, halfway so okay. that it can be, yeah, that it can be flexible. The leaves actually are steamed halfway. Oh, okay. And, yeah. And then um, you, you can add uh, um, potatoes to your, to your the dish. Or you don't have to add potatoes to the dish. It all depends if you want potatoes in it. And it's only extra. And it's also, it makes it, it, makes it more. And it, um, because you don't know if you're, if you're going to have a big family that's coming to you or not. So, yeah, it's just also extra. Okay. Yeah, because I noticed you said with the cabbage, you have extra cabbage. So you took the extra cabbage and you put it in the pan with the potatoes. It's kind of like yeah. a filler. It's like extra. Yes. Which it's potatoes extra and it, yeah. it makes makes it more also. So um, if you would like a second helping, then there is then they will be left. You can also keep it for the following day, which will taste even. It will be more delicious. Mm. Yes, you're right. Okay. You're right because the flavors kind yeah. of marry. I'm so excited to even try this that I'm going to make the meatballs. It could even make a meatloaf and maybe wrap some cabbage. I don't know if that's possible, but hey, what we could experiment. It sounds so yeah. unique. It's yes, so you unique. can even make it in the oven. You can oh, yeah. Um, just yeah um, take the um, the meatball and the cabbage, which is wrapped around already. And you can add a little um, oil to your pan that will be, you're going to be putting in the oven, and then you um, put the your meatballs with the cabbage into the oven, and you can um, bake it for about half an hour, and it will be ready. Okay, awesome, awesome tip. Can you use red cabbage, or you prefer the the white or the the green? You can use um, you can use any cabbage. Any, any kind. Okay. Terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you, Avril. And I have a question for Kona. Akona, are you there? 
Akona, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Akona's on mute. It's muted. Oh, there she is. I think Renee put Akona on, on mute. Oh. Uh, we lost a comment. I'm trying to get her to unmute. Ah, okay. I wonder if she can see us. I think she could see us and hear us, but she can't. We can't hear her. Yeah, we're trying to. I'm trying to get her to ask, oh. unmute. Uh, Akuna is Akuna is low vision, so can she, she will probably struggle to find the button. Hello. Okay. Can see you now. Okona, is that you? Hello. Yeah, can you see me now? Hello. Okona? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Okona. You can hear me? Yeah, can you see me also? I see you as well, yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's um, perfect. I have two questions, and then I'll turn it over to Alan. My first question, one is more about, one's a personal nature and one is more about your, your dish, which is amazing. Your enthusiasm and the little tips about putting the cloth on the cutting board. I love that. I love that you can eat this dish as a side dish or a main dish. But my question about your produce, I'm very, very curious. Both of you guys use cabbage in your dish. What produce do you have there in Cape Town that's local that you use a lot of? Is the cabbage one of them or others? Uh, sorry, can you please repeat your question? Um, can you please repeat your question, please? Oh, I just wanted to know what, you want me to repeat the question? I wanted to know what produce there in South in, um, Cape Town, South Africa is local and very common that you might use. You both use cabbage. I'm maybe thinking that's local. What produce is local there to Cape Town? Yeah, cabbage is local. Everything I've used in, in my port, I, I local do like find the all the time in the store. Okay. Do you have like open markets where you buy a lot of local produce? Yes, we do have open markets. You can get everything, spinach, anywhere, like anywhere you can get them. Okay. And the other signal, they're always good. Yes, I noticed you use spinach, and I noticed too when you cut it, it was so crunchy. You know, like here, I don't know, it's not as crunchy when you cut it. I could hear the crunch sound of the knife going through the spinach. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, the other question, and then I'll turn it over to Alan. I'm just curious about your eyesight. It said that you're partially, been partially sighted for the last six years. And I wonder, what is your eye condition and why are you partially sighted for the last six years? Can you share a little bit about that? Hello, Kakona, Akona. <laughs> oh no. Oh, <laughs> I want to know the answer to that question. And I sure our audience wants to know what your eye condition is and why you've been partially sighted for the last six years. I think Akona froze, um, but if you want to know a story, I could share it for her because I okay. am um I am the occupational therapist at Cape Town Society for the Blind. Um, so I work with a lot of the students. And I know Akuna, she's actually a registered nursing auxiliary. Um, yeah, so she studied for that. And then one day she just had a very bad headache and she had migraines and then she went to the hospital. And then she, like she explained before we started that she had, she didn't have any vision at all. Um, so she was diagnosed with, um, she had high cranial pressure. So there was fluid build up um, in her brain, um, um, spinal fluid build up. So she mentioned that it was either they put in a shunt or they do lumbar punches every day. Um, so she has a shunt and um, some of her eyesight came back. 
uh, but she she's doing really well. Akuna is so bright and she has a lot of potential. And um, at the moment, she's doing a course at Cape Town Society for the Blind that will um, bring up her qualifications. And hopefully she can work, she can go back to the um, health sector. But she's really amazing. And I wish she could have, she could have shared her story herself. But um, yeah, I, I think me and her, we're working closely uh, together just to find her a new path um, because she's very really passionate about helping people yes she's very passionate about helping people and cooking I could see that yeah <laughs> very good thank you for that inspirational no information thank you Alan do you want to add anything well I have a couple of questions that don't have a whole lot to do with food and cooking you kind of covered that but I'm curious about the life of blind people in South Africa. I'm wondering, do you people use guide dogs there? I have a guide dog and I would love to come down there and visit you guys. I'm just wondering, uh, do people there have guide dogs? Do you use them at all? Yes, we do. Uh, ah, okay. Yes. So you understand the concept that do you have the same, uh, do, you, do guide dogs have the right to be in places as they do here in the United States? Yes, yeah. they do. Okay, very good. Um, uh, I was also curious about your climate there. When Annette was asking about what food is locally available, I was wondering uh, what kind of a climate, what, what foods you generally grow there. Does it snow in the winter there? <laughs> it's kind of a joke. It doesn't snow here. It doesn't <laughs> snow. <laughs> But actually, funny enough, it was, um, I think it's such a, such a cold winter that it was snowing on the mountains and everybody's so excited that they, that it's snowing, that they drive to the mountains and they go and play around in the snow for a few hours before it melts. But it doesn't snow here. Yeah. So okay, it's quite, it's quite so rare. It mm. uh, if it doesn't mm. snow, you grow fruit it's trees like oranges and lemons and lime. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Golden, do you want to answer that? I know Golden is quite interested in, in you know, um, healthy living and healthy lifestyle. And, um, he, I'm sure you can tell us more about the South African produce. Please, I, I, I'm kind of curious what kinds of what you grow there and what your climate is like. Do I need to bring my winter coat or my bathing suit? <laughs> everything. Everything that you have there is also in South Africa. And remember, some of the fruit trees that you have there uh, came, came from Africa, by the way. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry to distract me. I'm so sorry. My battery just went flat due to being blind. I didn't take note that my battery was flat. So I'm sorry you were asking a question, but it's just went flat. Oh, well, um, um, oh, we've lost, yes, we've lost video. Pardon? Have we lost video? I've lost my video here. No, there was a question head over to me. So while I was trying to answer it, my battery just shut down. So I just came quickly to charge it. So I didn't take note that it was like flat. My apology for that. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Um, so do we have some questions from our virtual audience or comments from our virtual audience? Alan, um, we had yes. one here. We had one yes. here. Um, she said from Chani S to everyone, she said, wow, I'm so proud of South Africa. I'm from South Africa and I can definitely make use of these tips. Thank you so much for this amazing show. Appreciate it. Okay, the next up. And that's excellent. And we'd like to have a little bit of information on the Cape Town Society for the Blind uh, from Golden. Golden's got some information for us. Uh, yes. Thank, uh, thank you so much for the great work that you did. Uh, we are we are so excited that you have uh, put us on the map. Uh, we are happy about that. Uh, maybe I just want to say a bit of uh, background about Cape Town Society for the Blind. Uh, our organization is now 92 years 
So, uh, it, 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 was, it was started on the tenets of uh, helping people who are visually impaired here in Western Cape, uh, providing rehabilitation, social support, innovative, uh, and also employment opportunities for people with visual impairment. So we are so happy that uh, we have managed to help a lot of uh, blind and partially sighted people to lead uh, an independent life. Uh, we have some programs that we do offer at Cape Town Society for the Blind, uh, which are basically we have got keyboard orientation, which is ICDL, computer literacy, uh, MySita, which is end user computing, uh, smart DG, uh, life skills, uh, skills of daily living, orientation and mobility, uh, office administration, public speaking, braille literacy, fabric, uh, fabric uh, weaving, uh, can weaving and repairs. Uh, we also have uh, maybe a rehabilitation uh, a section where we have uh, low vision, social work activities, occupational therapy uh, programs, uh, orientation and mobility. Uh, we are happy uh, that we really managed to set up a low vision clinic, uh, which is uh, being manned by Shakira and, uh, and Suna. Uh, they are doing a great job there. But alongside that, we have, a, we have a vision, we have a goal. We still would want to uh, set up a a sensory uh, room for children. Uh, this is the plan that we now have after having established the low vision clinic. We want to have a sensory room uh, for children. Uh, this is going to help the children uh, in terms of uh, preventing childhood blindness and low vision as well. The following activities would take place if we manage to get uh, resources or funding uh, to establish uh, the sensory room at CTSB. Uh, it is going to be a screening with screening children, assessment, uh, familial support, training and use of uh, assistive devices within that uh, set up. So this is our main uh, main now uh, a goal that we would want to focus on. Now, because of the fact that we are a non-profit organization, uh, most of our, our funds uh, comes from donors. So we would really appreciate if uh, people from all over the world, from all walks of life, maybe if, you, if, if cooking without looking as well, can also uh, share with uh, their friends about our need to establish this facility at Cape Town Society for the Blind. We would really appreciate and would be happy about it. So in a nutshell, we would want to thank you so much. But since you are all you guys, you are going to visit us, I think you're going to be excited to be in Cape Town. Uh, we are really, we are eagerly waiting to see you here. Uh, we know now coronavirus is there for, is there to stay. So we cannot stop traveling because of COVID-19. We still have to travel. Uh, thank you so much. But I wanted to share some, a little bit about, uh, about the poem that I, I did. Uh, I, 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 I did a poem. I wrote a poem. Uh, for cooking without looking, including the YouTube. So I was hoping that probably we were going also to hear it, but maybe for the sake of the time now, it was very impossible for us to hear about it. What I did is that I, after having uh, realized and seen 
uh, what cooking without looking is doing to the people who are visually impaired, I decided to write a poem about cooking without looking so that uh, people uh, all over the world uh, will quickly and easily identify uh, and see actually the good thing that uh, cooking without looking TV show is doing. This is why I had to write this poem. Uh, I would want you to maybe uh, send it on YouTube so that at least the YouTube can also be aware of what the, the great job that they are doing in partnership with uh, TV, uh, with cooking without looking TV show. Uh, this is quite good. This is quite commendable. I'm happy about what you did and what you are doing. Thank you. Well, you are so very welcome. And you guys are doing a tremendous job down there. I have a quick question. Are you familiar with the uh, civic organization called the Lions Club International? Have you ever heard of the Lions Clubs? Yeah, I have heard, but uh, yes, you I have heard. You might want to contact them because they have been known in the past to be very helpful to all blind organizations around the world. And uh, I know that our organ, our, our, I'm a member of our Lions Club here in South Florida, uh, United States. And uh, we, we've helped people, well, especially here in South Florida, but we help people also all over the United States. We raise money for projects, just like what you guys are doing. Maybe we would we contact them. We would do really appreciate if you can maybe uh, send uh, contacts to, to Liseo or to Sandra or to, to Judith so that at least uh, maybe we will be able to uh, get some assistance so that at least this project will be uh, fruitful in the near future. We'll see if we can find a Lions Club that is in South Africa somewhere. I'm sure they are. I, I just don't know where you'd find the uh, organizational leaders, that's all. We'll see what we can do. Right, Renee? I hope you're listening. <laughs> I am listening. I, I'm going to like hunt it down and I'll find something for you, Gold, and I'll send it off. And Alan, I'll tell you about it too. I'll tell you guys. So I'll help you out. Thank, you, if I, I'll thank help you, you so out. much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You guys did such a wonderful job. <laughs> We're appreciative of it. Lions Club is situated here in, in South Africa. Um, yeah, um, I know quite a few um, people of Lions Club. Oh, okay. well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That, that's your contacts right there. Uh, they do help out by raising money for projects exactly like what you're thinking about doing. I'm so proud of you guys doing that kind of stuff too. Yes, they do, because um, I belong to a, a social club called Lighthouse Association for the Blind. So, um, and Lions Club, they um, do assist, assist the, um, at the club. So, yeah, they Excellent. do quite a lot of charity work and help us out. Excellent. Well... We would like to thank everyone who made this Cooking Without Looking TV show South Africa edition possible, namely all of those people in the Cape Town Society for the Blind. Yes, and I would like to copy that and thank everybody. You know, even though they're so far away in Cape Town, South Africa, through this Zoom broadcast, we are all actually six, six degrees apart. We're actually very close. And I'd just like to thank everybody specifically from Cape Town and everybody out there that watches our show to just know that we appreciate you because you help the way you, it, the whole tagline, and it's a good one, is changing the way we see blindness. And you've helped us to do that. So thank you. You will be able thank to. Thank you very much. Okay. Ah. Uh, all of us and all of you in the audience will be able to view this show and many others on our Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel. If you want to try today's recipes, they're posted on our website at www.cookingwithoutlooking.com.
looking TV dot wordpress dot com. And don't forget to enjoy our Cooking Without Looking TV show podcast anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. Yes, thank you, Alan, for that. The podcasts are amazing. You get to go in the world of the blind and visually impaired and find out what is going on in their mind and how they're feeling, how they're thinking about their blindness and all the great accomplishments they've done. I just wanted to add that. But I just wanted to thank everybody from Cooking Without Looking. We wanted to thank everyone who has joined us today. We want you to have a safe, great weekend and be safe in the kitchen as well. And uh, we'll see you next time. So bye for now. Bye. 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 Thank you very much.